Your Majesties, Mr. President, Nobel Peace Laureate, Your Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. On the 9th of October this year, the Norwegian Nobel Committee announced that the Nobel Peace Prize for 2009 was to be awarded to President Barack Obama for his extraordinary efforts to strengthen international diplomacy and cooperation between peoples. The committee has attached special importance to, to Obama's vision O and work for a world free from nuclear weapons. Commenting on the award, President Obama said he did not feel that he deserved to be in the company of so many transformative figures that have been honored by this prize and whose courageous pursuit of peace has inspired the world. But he added that he also knew that the Nobel Peace Prize had not just been used to honor specific achievements, but also to give momentum to a set of causes. The prize could thus represent a call to action. President Obama has understood the Norwegian Nobel Committee perfectly. We congratulate him with this year's Nobel Peace Prize. This year's award must be viewed in the light of the prevailing situation in the world with great tension, numerous wars, unresolved conflicts, and confrontation on many fronts of the world. And not least, there is the imminent danger of spread of nuclear weapons, degradation of the environment, and global warming. Time magazine recently described the, de the decade that is coming to an end as the worst since the Second World War. From the very first moment of his presidency, President Obama has been trying to create a, a cooperative climate which can reverse this trend. He has already lowered the temperature in the world in the words of former Peace Prize laureate Desmond Tutu. The committee always takes Alfred Nobel's will as its frame of reference. We are to award the Nobel Peace Prize to the person who during the preceding year, meaning in this case since the previous award in December 2008, shall have the done, done the most or the best work for fraternity between nations, for the abolition or reduction of standing armies, and for the holding and promotion of peace congresses, to quote from the bill. The question was actually quite simple. Who has done most for peace in the world the past year? If the question is put in Alfred Nobel's terms, the answer is relatively easy to find. It had to be U.S. President Barack Obama. Only really does one person dominate international politics to the same extent as Obama, or in such a short space of time, initiate so many and such major changes as Obama has done. The question for the committee was rather whether it would be bold enough to single out the most powerful man in the world with the responsibility and the obligations that come with the office of the President of the United States. 
the committee came to the conclusion that it must still be possible to award the Nobel Peace Prize to a political leader. We cannot get the world on a safer track without political leadership. And time is short. Many have argued that the prize came, comes too early. But history can tell us a great deal about lost opportunities. It is now, today, we have the opportunity to support President Obama's ideas. This year's prize is indeed a call to action for all of us. The committee knows that many will weigh his ideals against what he really does. And that should be welcomed. But if the demand is either to fulfill your ideals to the letter and at once, or to stop having ideals, we are left with the most damaging division between the limits of today's realities and the vision for tomorrow. Then politics becomes pure cynicism. Political leaders must be able to think beyond the often narrow confines of realpolitik. Only in this way can we move the world in the right direction. Obama has achieved a great deal. Multilateral diplomacy has regained a central position with the emphasis on the role that the United Nations and other international institutions can play. Former Secretary General of the United Nations, Doug Hammarskjöld, said that UN was not created to take humanity to heaven, but to save it from hell. The United States is now paying its bill to the UN. It is joining various committees and acceding to important conventions. International standards are again respected. Torture is forbidden. The president is doing what he can to close Guantanamo. Human rights and international law are guiding principles. This is why this year's laureate has earned the praise of leaders of international institutions. New opportunities have been created. <laughs>